This episode is brought to you by Visit Williamsburg. In Williamsburg, Virginia, there's never too much of a good thing. Whether you're a foodie, a golfer, a history buff, a shopaholic, an outdoor enthusiast, or a thrill seeker, you'll find what you came for here and more. So ask yourself, what is it you want? Discover Williamsburg and plan your trip at visitwilliamsburg.com. This new year, it's time to do wellness on your terms. That's where Ollie comes in. Thanks to their delightful gummies, you can actually get a good night's sleep. And you might finally stand a chance of staying focused. Because this is the year of you. Discover all your vitamins and supplements. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2642. Six Simple Ways to Create Alone Time in a Crowded Room by Liz Green of introvertdeer.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Welcome back to our Sunday bonus episode, where I share an article with you from a different podcast in our network. Today's episode comes from Optimal Relationships Daily. So with that, here's Greg with the post and commentary as we optimize your life. Six Simple Ways to Create Alone Time in a Crowded Room by Liz Green of introvertdeer.com Compared to extroverts, introverts have a higher baseline level of arousal and use increased mental resources when processing external stimuli. This is part of the reason we're so much more sensitive to light, noise, and people in general. It's also why we're so easily overstimulated and need time alone to recharge. Unfortunately, whether we're working in an open office, forced to attend a networking event, or spending time with family around the holidays, there are times in our lives when being surrounded by people is an inevitability. It's during these crowded moments that we want to escape into ourselves the most, and that's not always the easiest of feats. The good news is that it is possible to manufacture alone time, even when you're fenced in. Here are six simple ways to do just that. How to Manufacture Alone Time Number 1. Pop on your headphones Headphones are the introvert's best friend. Not only do they allow us to drown out intrusive noise, they're also a well-known social cue to leave the wearer alone. Though noise-canceling headphones provide unrivaled means for silencing the tumult of a crowded room, they can be rather expensive. If you can't afford noise-canceling headphones, regular headphones paired with white noise are your next best bet. White noise not your thing? Consider relaxing electronic music featuring binaural beats. The following techniques for carving out a slice of alone time in a crowded room can be achieved without headphones. However, they're far more likely to be effective if carried out while wearing them. Number two, break out the coloring book or crossword puzzle. If you haven't noticed yet, coloring books aren't just for kids anymore. There are a few reasons adults are jumping onto this trend, but most experts believe the stress-relieving qualities of coloring are the force behind its renewed popularity. Coloring reduces stress by forcing us to utilize our imagination and focus on what we're doing in the moment, thus allowing us to leave our problems behind. Any adult coloring book will do, but if you're looking for a unique introvert-themed one, check out introvert dear creator Jen Grandman's Introvert Dreams. Like coloring, Crossword puzzles are a great way to relax and forget your worries for a little while. Furthermore, this mind-consuming activity vastly improves verbal and problem-solving skills, while causing you to think deeply. Number 3. Open a book. Reading is yet another fantastic social cue that plainly says, leave me alone, to any passers-by. It's also good for you. A study by MindLab International found reading to be one of the best ways to lower your heart rate, relieve muscle tension, and reduce overall stress. And strangely enough, reading is one of the ways many introverts socialize. Through books, we can tap directly into the collective human experience and satisfy some of the needs of social interaction, all without ever speaking to another human being. Number 4. Do a Basic Craft You may not have the time to break out your latest knitting or woodworking project when you're surrounded by people, especially if you're in the office. But 
Small crafts like origami are a great way to take a quick break and focus on something other than making small talk with the people around you. And much like the activities mentioned, crafts are a stress buster. Laid back, repetitive physical activities alleviate tension through progressive muscle relaxation. Plus, when you're done, you have something awesome to show for your downtime. Number five, pull out your phone. Forget sliced bread. Smartphones have to be one of the best inventions ever to grace the human race. For introverts, our phones are so much more than the sum of their parts. They allow us to carry an entire library in our pockets, to socialize in a way that grants us the time we need to carefully articulate our thoughts, and to become absorbed in games that are both relaxing and didactic. And of course, there's always social media. But perhaps the most appealing aspect of our smartphones is that they give us the ability to avoid small talk and other shallow forms of socializing when in public. I can't tell you how many times my phone has saved me when standing in line at the store or waiting in the doctor's office. No longer do I have to furtively avoid eye contact with people nearby in fear that they'll decide to strike up a conversation with me. Smartphones are a godsend. Number six, try a little meditation. Traditional meditation might not be possible in the office, but breathing exercises certainly are. If you're not already wearing headphones, pop them on and crank up some white noise or any other noise or music that you find particularly relaxing. Start by paying attention to your breath and observing how it feels. Is it long or short? Deep or shallow? Steady or shaky? Once you've ascertained how you're currently breathing, begin taking longer breaths, fully inhaling and fully exhaling. Then, count to four as you inhale and count to six as you exhale, making your exhale slightly longer than your inhale. Keep counting your breaths for five to ten minutes before resuming normal breathing. This guided breathing stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system, slowing your heart rate and allowing your body to rest. Though these simple methods for creating a contrived isolation may not be quite as rejuvenating as genuine alone time, they can at least tide you over until you're able to get away. So the next time you find yourself trapped in a crowded room, put on your headphones, take a few deep breaths, and pull out your favorite relaxing activity. Your introverted brain will thank you. You just listened to the post titled, Six Simple Ways to Create Alone Time in a Crowded Room, by Liz Green of introvertdeer.com. Have you been using Mint to manage your finances? First, the bad news. Mint is shutting down. And now, good news. There's a better alternative. Our sponsor, Monarch Money. Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and loving it. Maybe you're saving for a down payment, a wedding, a dream vacation, your kid's college. I've found that Monarch makes it so easy to help you reach your financial goals, whatever they are. I definitely wouldn't be able to allocate my finances or plan as clearly without the help from Monarch. In fact, Monarch is the top-rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all of your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com OFD. After trying out Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash OFD. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash OFD for your extended 30-day free trial. Shipping can make or break a sale, so optimize how you ship your orders with ShipStation. They make it easy to automate and manage orders no matter how big your business grows. And they might even be able to help reduce shipping and warehouse costs. So optimize and keep up your momentum for growth with ShipStation. Sign up for your free 60-day trial now at ShipStation.com and use the code P-O-D. That's ShipStation.com with the code P-O-D. Some great suggestions by Liz here today. There sure are a lot of means for us to separate ourselves from social pressures when we need to and she's helped us identify some. Though if I may compound this article or add a footnote, might I suggest being intentional about how you generate this alone time rather than avoidant? And when I say intentional, I mean that it's healthier to go towards something new as opposed to merely escape 
and look for a distraction that only helps temporarily. Liz uses the word avoid when talking about the use of phones, and I wonder if we can instead focus on where we're going, you know? For example, her suggestions of meditation, book reading, and crossword puzzles are a lot more active choices. They bring us towards a new exciting task rather than making the focal point dodging something that's uncomfortable. There's a distinction there that can help us feel empowered, even if we are trying to ultimately get away from something that's uncomfortable. It's better to do it actively than reactively. And I should also say that she left out my favorite strategy, which would be attaching myself to the nearest animal in the room. Yes, I am definitely the one in the corner with the dog if I'm needing a little break at the party. But this energizes me, right? Because I love animals. So it's not hiding. Rather, it's creating a new activity that I enjoy. Does that make sense? Well, I hope so, because it's time to wrap up. (laughs) Uh, Thanks a lot for joining me, everyone, as we wrap up yet another edition of ORD. I hope you like what Liz had to say today, and I hope you will join me tomorrow where we will check out a post from Mark Manson, one of my favorites. That's where your optimal life awaits.